Hi, I'm Victoria Hills. I'm the Chief Executive of the Old Oak and Park Royal Development Corporation. I work for the Mayor of London. I've been involved in setting up the new Mayoral Development Corporation over the last two years and I'm delighted to have an opportunity to talk to you about what it's like to be client side, what it's like to set up a new organisation and how this is an important business skill um, and how we work with organisations like yours going forward. My starting point uh, was really um, in my career early on as a geographer. I wanted to use geography, I wanted to be involved in placemaking, I wanted to place shape. I never thought as a geographer that I would actually have a chance to do that, uh, but I did go on to do a master's in town planning and that led me down a transport route. I was particularly interested in how places uh, shaped because of transport connectivity. London obviously starting with the, the River Thames uh, was, a, was a key driver um, and moving forward um, beyond that. Particularly rail is something that interested me. Little did I know that sort of 20 years on I'd find myself involved in a project really driven forward by High Speed 2, the largest rail infrastructure project that this country has seen um, certainly for a century, if not ever. My journey um, has led me to establish the Merrill Development Corporation. This is quite a big deal. It's the newest functional body of the Greater London Authority. It's one of the newest statutory planning authorities in the country. And it is um, effectively a pop-up functional body. It's a, it's a start-up. If I was an entrepreneur, I would go to see a bank to ask them to lend me some money to start up a company. In this case, um, I went to see the mayor. Uh, the mayor has funded the authority through the Greater London Authority. It's taxpayer funded and therefore there's a big responsibility to establish an organisation that is going to maximise the benefits from HS2 and Crossrail coming together for the only place in the country. What I'm keen to do is establish an exemplary public sector organisation. I have experience of working in the private sector and in the public sector. There is a real opportunity here in establishing a new public sector organisation to bring in private sector service standards delivery and disciplines into the public sector to deliver a phenomenal organisation, I hope in due course, um, to drive forward delivery of thousands of jobs and homes in Old Oak and Park Wall. And really part of that is a commitment to people and I'm going to be talking a lot about people um, as we go through this today. I talked about it being a big responsibility and it is because when you're given a blank sheet of paper and asked to establish a statutory body and you have one member of staff and you find yourself two years on with the best part of 40 staff, um, that is quite a rapid growth. There were no organisations coming together as was the case with the Legacy Corporation. This was an entirely new brief, an entirely new part of London, where not a lot had really happened for many decades, um, in fact. And so the responsibility of getting something established quickly and doing it in an efficient way um, is, is really important, particularly in the public sector when you're spending taxpayers' money. There is added responsibility in the sense this is a very special location. So Old Oak and Park Wall is in West London. There's nothing particularly special about that, but it's the only place in the country where High Speed 2 and Crossrail connect. There you have two national infrastructure projects coming together for the only place in the country in West London, 10 minutes from Heathrow and 36, 37 minutes from Birmingham when High Speed 2 opens. Then you couple into the fact that there are already three underground lines, three overground lines, the Great West Main Line, the West Coast Main Line, 10 rail lines in total. And what you've got is effectively the hub of hubs. You have rail connectivity probably better than any other place in the country. While somewhere like Clapham Junction will have more trains per hour going through, Old Oak will have connections um, beyond which we're just starting to grapple with. For example, all of London's uh, airports will be connected together for the first time ever by rail, um, courtesy of the new station at Old Oak and Park Royal. And to put it into context, the new station is the largest subsurface station to have ever been built in this country. It's certainly the largest new build for over a century, but when you're talking about 90% the size of Waterloo at a subsurface level, it's a really big deal. Lots of people get very passionate about Old Oak and Park Royal. 
it's a very interesting location. A lot of people around the world already know about it. It's already on the case study circuit, if you like. I recently returned from doing a crit at uh, Cambridge, Berkeley universities coming together to look at a master plan for old oak. So everybody's super excited about it. With that becomes a big responsibility that if you're going to design a plan for the future to make the most of this regeneration opportunity, it's really got to be a fabulous plan. It's got to be really good because if not, forevermore, you'll be criticised for wasting the opportunity. So to make the most of this, you're only really going to do this in partnership with people. Um, when I talk about people, I mean people who live in the local area, people who want to live in the local area, people who work in the area. I mean people that you've got to work with, so all of your stakeholders, whether they be organisations, big rail ones like Network Rail, DFT, TFL, High Speed 2, whether they be um, politicians, local, regional we have, and, and national, we have them all. We have local MPs, we have assembly members and we have local councillors. They all want to be part of it, they all want to have their say. And bringing all of those views together is really important in this responsibility to get it right because we've often seen examples around the UK and elsewhere where regeneration projects don't get it right and people feel fed up because they can't afford to buy a place there or they can't get in or the public spaces aren't right or the connectivity is not there. And so here there's a big responsibility to get it right. It's also a big balancing act. Setting up a new organisation, there's a lot of excitement about getting things going and turning around and saying if you can all just go away please for five years while we do a master plan and nothing's going to get built until the station opens in 2026 that doesn't really cut it with all of those people that I've just been describing to you. On the one hand you do need to future proof a development and you need to have a very clear strategy going forward about how things are going to be funded and delivered and who's doing what and who owns which bit of land and who's designing which buildings but on the other hand there is an urgent need in London for more housing now and jobs. People often think about West London as being a very well-off area, but actually not too far away from the image you can see behind me in Halsden, um, there's some very deprived wards, very high levels of young people not in education or employment. They can't access jobs and there will be a lot of jobs coming here whether in construction or whether in the end state. So getting things going now to prepare those people for jobs and getting some early delivery of homes is really important for all of the local people, whether they be residents or politicians or stakeholders. But so is not rushing things. And throughout your careers, you will find that a conflict, that somehow you have to find the sweet spot in the middle that does enough to satisfy people who want things done now whilst looking to the future where other people will be taking um, the thanks and gratitude for things that were determined or worked on many years before. And if you take Crossrail as an example of that, that's been on the books since about the 1940s. Um, it nearly got agreed for funding in the 1990s and, and then finally um, in the 2000s the funding came. It was a previous mayor, the first mayor who who, who secured that, the second mayor who developed the scheme, and it will be the third mayor who cuts a ribbon. So future proofing is really important, but so is early delivery. The role that I do as a public official is multifaceted, but ultimately somebody has to take decisions, someone has to call the shots. Public officials are often criticised for not taking decisions, deferring important decisions, putting things off, delay. Politicians, on the other hand, are very good at taking decisions. They like to take decisions, that's what they thrive on. My ambition is to have a public organisation that can take decisions, that isn't afraid to, that accepts that we're not going to get them right all the time, but by working with people and making sure we talk to all of those people, whatever their role is, and involving them in a conversation, we can take a decision, even if they don't agree with it, at least we've involved them in the conversation in the first place, and that's really important. But so is actually selling the project. Um, so many large projects like um, Old Oak Park Royal, um, but many others, I'm not going to name them, but across London and beyond. I've spoken to many of my counterparts and said, how did you get over those early years when people are doing the project down, think it's too difficult, can't be funded, it's too technically unviable, or nothing's going to happen? How do you get around that? And the simple answer I've had from counterparts in, in, is, 
you have to go out and sell the dream. You are the salesman for the project. A big part of my role is going out and securing buy-in from people, whether they're the local people in business or live in the area, whether they're the local politicians, regional, national politicians, whether they're investors, um, decision makers, whether they're the statutory organisations who are actually going to run the rail services in the area. Securing that buy-in is so important and it's my ambition that in the role um, that I do and that Old Oak uh, Park Royal Development Corporation is trying to do, not just myself but the team, we all go out and we sell that ambition, we sell the dream. And here are my dream team. It's really important that in the role that I do that I don't think that I'm going to be able to solve all of this by myself. I recognise having been a team member for all of my career that it's all about the team. We have a one team approach. I want to bring in private sector discipline, discipline of working in a, a team approach where people come in and out on the project to help each other out to get the job done. I want to bring that into the team that I've established so that we all work as one team. And it's one thing going out and securing staff. It's really easy to do when you have a big flagship project and people are attracted and drawn in. But the real challenge is actually holding on to staff and the public sector isn't the best at holding on to talent. All too often we see people trained up and become experts and then disappear off to the private sector. And I'm actually quite unusual that I've stayed now working for the Mayor of London for 15 years. Many of my counterparts have disappeared off. Part of that is about the passion, um, but part of it is because I really do want to instill excellence in public service delivery and keeping the best staff in there starts for me. If I'm in it, then I can help influence it. Managing talent in particular is really important. Something I'm passionate about, and it's not something you'll hear many public sector organisations talk about, uh, but it is in the private sector, and it's about retaining your staff, but it's about rewarding talent, it's about creating opportunities. And my starting point is putting myself in the shoes of any staff that I speak to. What is it that would keep me working for OPDC? What is it that keeps me wanting to come in and do what I do day after day? And looking at what opportunities we can provide to retain our staff going forward. That's really important. Um, and part of that is actually staff thinking about that themselves. And I often say to people who ask me for careers advice, I'm happy to give you advice, but what have you thought about what you're going to do? Coming back to the people, um, a big part of what we do is reminding ourselves and myself daily, why are we doing all of this? Why are we producing a local plan? Why are we procuring a master plan? Why are we bidding for money for part war? Why are we going out and engaging with people? What are we talking to them about? And reminding yourself what it is your, uh, your vision, your mission, what you were trying to do here. And, and reminding at the end of the day, we're just about driving forward delivery of jobs and homes to create a great place something that we can all be proud of. And putting people at the heart of that is really important. So I can't underestimate how much time you should spend in your careers on engagement and communication. And whilst you may not always agree with the local community and whilst they may not like um, what you're coming up with in your work, at least by having a conversation with them, you can air these views and you're having a communication. The worst thing is when people don't talk and that's when you get a lot more confrontation playing out in projects. And keeping a conversation going, in particular, thinking about compromise and thinking about what is it that you can give to them, to the people, if they're not happy, uh, what is it you would want if you were in their shoes um, and using their, their talent to help influence your projects. That's really important. If you're committed to your career, hopefully some of what I've said is going to be helpful to you thinking about how you work uh, with clients like myself um, and other public sector bodies going forward. You do need to know what you're talking about. You need to have the knowledge and skills. You need to have um, a real hard working Ethos, if you want to get on and, and do well, there are no shortcuts, but you also need a bit more than that. I've, I've worked with people before who have been excellent, really, really clever, far cleverer than myself, coming out of Cambridge or Oxford with first class degrees and, and then go on and do all sorts of very impressive quali qualifications, far more than I have. And yet my career has moved on more than theirs has. 
and I've thought long and hard about what is it that, that I've been able to do that they haven't. And so, yes, you do need knowledge and you do need to be clever and you do need to work hard. But you also need a real passion and a commitment and authenticity to what you do. You need to really care about what you're doing. And if you do, that will come across and people will recognise that and they want to work with you and they want you to work for them. And sometimes you do need to be in the right place at the right time. And sometimes we're not and you have to accept that that wasn't the right project or the right move for you. Um, but sometimes you need that little bit of luck just to get you into a very um, amazing position um, like I find myself in today, heading up one of the most exciting regeneration projects. But it's not just luck, it's all those other components um, that I've talked about. So I wish you the very best of luck in your careers and um, hope that you've enjoyed listening. Thank you.